This video is about how Neuralink will make our brains 100 times faster. Actually, maybe 100,000 times faster. Because you know when you have that genius idea, maybe it's a solution to a problem at work, or the perfect way to explain something that you're passionate about, or even just the funniest joke you ever thought of. And then you try to say it out loud, and it just falls flat. This happens to all of us every single day, maybe some more than others. We're walking around with these supercomputers in our skulls, but we're stuck communicating through this incredibly slow, lossy interface called language. It's like trying to upload a 4K movie through a dial-up connection from 1995. Now our intelligence, creativity, and imagination will always have real limitations, but bandwidth is where we can grab massive improvements in communication, which will unlock new levels of intelligence, creativity, and imagination. What if the problem is just how slowly thoughts move from your brain to the outside world? And what if someone figured out how to speed that up by 100 times. Within the next few years, current Neuralink patients should be able to think up a complete email and have it appear in your inbox faster than I can finish reading the sentence. If you're a surgeon, you'll be working alongside colleagues who can instantly share the muscle memory from thousands of operations. Not through words or demonstrations, but literally transferring the neural patterns that guide their hands. If you're a programmer, you'll be competing with people who can transmit entire system architectures as complete mental models in the time it takes you to open PowerPoint. The first humans with high bandwidth brain interfaces are already here, and their capabilities are expanding rapidly. Think about the last time you tried to explain a complex idea to someone and watch their eyes glaze over or when you had a brilliant insight but couldn't capture it in words that did it justice. Every relationship you have gets filtered through this same communication bottleneck. These concepts may seem like science fiction, but they could totally happen within less than a decade. Your phone's internet connection transfers data millions of times faster than your ability to communicate any thoughts. We're about to fix that imbalance, and it'll create a divide unlike anything seen before. Imagine competing for jobs against people who can download skills directly into their minds, or dating someone who can share their actual memories with you, or working alongside colleagues who understand your ideas as completely as you do the moment that you think them. The people who understand this shift early won't just have an advantage. They'll be living in an entire different world. Whether we like it or not, this will affect us all. So I suppose just think about how fortunate we are to recognize some of this before 99.99% .99 of the world. As a side note, that's what I now recognize. Just by watching this channel and hopefully being subscribed, I think you have a major awareness advantage over billions of other people. Or we could frame this as a question. How many people in the world have only heard of Neuralink? But that's it. We are so early. So let's talk numbers, because when you see the math behind human communication, it becomes pretty clear why we're all walking around frustrated half the time. If you talk nonstop from the moment you woke up until you went to bed, or typed every single second you were awake, the total amount of information you could output might hit 80 or 90,000 bits. Your brain, which is the most complex structure in the known universe, manages to output about the same amount of data in an entire day as one grainy photo. Hi, I'm Julian. I'm one of the leads on the implant team. So the way humans communicate today, if they want to output information, is by using their hands and their voice, as I'm doing right now. And if you want to receive information, you use your ears and your eyes. And of course, that's how you're receiving this very talk. But we've built this implant. And this implant is very special because it is the first time that we're able to add a completely new mode of data transfer into and out of the brain. Julian just described what might be the most important technological breakthrough of our lifetime, the first new method of human communication in thousands of years. Since the dawn of language, we've been stuck with the same four channels, speaking, listening, writing, and reading. That's it. Every human achievement, every relationship, every idea that's ever changed the world has been squeezed through these four incredibly narrow pipes. The breakthrough Julian's talking about isn't just faster typing or better voice recognition. It's a completely new channel that bypasses the physical limitations of your mouth, your hands, and even your eyes. 
But first, we need to understand just how severe this bottleneck really is. When you try to share an idea, you're essentially taking a rich, multi-dimensional thought and compressing it down into a linear sequence of words. It's like trying to explain a symphony by humming one note at a time. Wars have been fought because leaders couldn't communicate their intentions clearly. Scientific breakthroughs have been delayed for decades because researchers couldn't share what they were seeing. Relationships end, not because people stop caring about each other, but because they can't express the depth of what they feel. This isn't a failure of intelligence or creativity, it's a fundamental limitation of the interface between our biological minds and the outside world. Before we dive into how Neuralink solves this, let me paint a picture of what life looks like once this bottleneck disappears. On a personal level, imagine waking up and instead of fumbling your words to describe a dream, you could share the actual visual experience with your partner. Not like a description of the dream, the actual dream itself in full sensory detail. Or you're working on a project and hit a creative block. Instead of scheduling meetings and sending documents back and forth, you could instantly share the mental model of your problem with the entire team. They'd understand not just what you're thinking, but how you're thinking about it. Before we get to more ideas, are you or anyone you know suffering from Lyme disease? Today's sponsor is LymeChart, an AI chronic care companion for patients managing Lyme disease, one of the most underserved and complex conditions. It helps patients organize their medical records, understand their symptoms, answer their day-to-day -day questions, and prepare for doctor visits all privately and securely. Do me a favor and click the link in the description to pre-order LimeChart for free. No credit card required, thanks. But the collective implications are even more profound. Right now, human progress is limited by how quickly we can transfer knowledge from one mind to the other. A brilliant researcher makes a discovery, writes a paper, other researchers read it, interpret it, and maybe build on it months or years later. With high bandwidth brain interfaces, that entire process collapses into real-time collaboration. Scientific teams could literally think together, sharing insights as they form, rather than after they've been translated into clumsy academic papers. Educational systems would transform overnight. Instead of spending years learning to read and write, then decades accumulating knowledge through these slow channels, students could directly access the accumulated wisdom of human civilization. And we're already seeing this play out with AI models today. We're talking about the difference between humanity thinking as billions of isolated individuals versus thinking as a connected collective intelligence. Well, I have a confession. This is really just the internet, an interconnected web where information can be exchanged rapidly. But consider how this actually works. Every human brain is a node and the speed it sends and receives information is insanely slow relative to once it gets sent off. But this transformation starts with understanding what makes it possible. And that brings us to the company that's actually building this technology. My channel Neuropod is a channel dedicated to all things Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and if you're new here, Neuralink is developing a high bandwidth brain machine interface to help people who are paralyzed or suffering from neurological conditions. Right now, they have successfully implanted brain chips in at least 13 human trial participants, all of whom seem to be doing well. These aren't experimental prototypes. They're working devices that are genuinely transforming lives. Nolan Arbaugh, their first patient, has been living with a Neuralink implant for over a year and a half. He can control his computer, play games, browse the internet, and communicate all just by thinking. Alex, Neuralink's second patient, broke world records for brain-computer interface performance within days of getting his implant. This is Julian sharing more about how this works. If you look at this device in a nutshell, it's really just sampling voltages in the brain and sending them over radio. But if you zoom out and look at the system from end to end, what you actually see is that we're connecting your brain or a biological neural net to a machine learning model or a silicon neural net on the right hand side. And I actually think this is really elegant because the machine learning model on the right hand side is in fact inspired by neurons on the left hand side. And so in some sense, we're really extending the fundamental substrate of the brain. Neuralink isn't just reading brain signals. 
They're connecting biological neural networks to artificial ones. Your brain and AI systems will become extensions of each other, and they'll eventually merge to become one and the same. The current devices work with around 1,024 electrodes, each one positioned next to individual neurons to detect their electrical activity. Think of these like extremely tiny microphones, but instead of listening for sound waves, they're detecting the voltage spikes that represent thoughts. So these are some of the first implants that we ever built. Um, there are electrodes that were made with our in-house lithography tools. We have custom ASICs that we also designed in-house. And this was really a platform for us to develop the technology that allows us to sense micro-level volts in the brain across thousands of channels simultaneously. We learn a lot from this, but as you'll notice in the right two images, there are USB-C connectors on these devices. These were not really the most implantable implants. The evolution Julian describes here is crucial. Those early prototypes with USB-C connectors were proof of concept devices. The current implants are completely wireless, invisible once implanted, and designed for long-term use. This next set of images are the wireless implants. And there was a complete evolution that we went through to add the battery, the antenna, the radio, and to make it actually fully implantable. Once it's implanted, it's completely invisible. It's very compact, it's modular, and it's a general platform that you can use in many places in the brain. That phrase, general platform, is key. This isn't just a medical device, it's the foundation for expanding human capabilities across the board. The same technology helping paralyzed patients control computers today will eventually help all of us communicate at digital speeds. Now let's get to the heart of what makes this a 100 times improvement rather than just a marginal upgrade. Current Neuralink patients are already achieving around 10 bits per second of information output when controlling a computer cursor. That's actually faster than many able-bodied people using a mouse. But it's just the beginning. The plan is to scale from 1,024 electrodes to over 3,000 by next year, then continue increasing from there. More electrodes means more neurons being monitored, which means exponentially more information can be gathered from our brain activity. So what's next? We're gonna be increasing our manufacturing so that we don't just produce, you know, a certain, like a small number of implants per year, but thousands and then eventually millions of implants per year. We're also going to be increasing channel count. More channels means more neurons are sensed, which means more capabilities. In some sense, we often think a lot about the, the Moore's law of neurons that we're interacting with. And in the same way that Moore's law propelled forward many subsequent revolutions in computing, we think that sensing more and more neurons will also completely redefine how we interact with computers and reality at large. Julian mentions Moore's law of neurons, the idea that the number of neurons Neuralink can interface with will double regularly just like computer processing power did for decades. Well, this exponential scaling is what makes the 100 times improvement not just possible, but inevitable. I wanna leave you with one final thought. When I was a child, I used a 56 kilobit modem to access the internet. If you remember what it's like, you, you would go to a website and, and like there would be an image and it would, it would scroll like slowly, it was loading pixel by pixel on the screen. So that, that's what it's like to be bandwidth limited. Now imagine using the current internet with that same modem. It's like, it's inconceivable. It would be impossible to do. So what broadband internet did to the 56 kilobit modem is what this hardware is going to do to the brain. We are trying to drastically expand the amount of bandwidth that you have access to, to have a much richer experience and superhuman capabilities. That comparison perfectly captures what we're talking about. Right now, your brain is operating on a 56K modem while trying to access the modern internet. You have these incredibly rich thoughts and ideas, but you can only transmit them one pixel at a time. Elon and Julian even exchanged some fun banter regarding this. When I was a child, I used a 56 kilobit modem to access the internet. If you remember what it's like, you would go to a website. Uh, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you're a lucky bastard. Yeah, when yeah. I was a child, we had acoustic couplers. Oh, yeah, okay. So just beep, at, just beep at each other. Yeah, the, the first modem was the acoustic coupler. Incredible device, honestly. But then if you, uh, I guess if you're my age, you started with 56K bit modem. <laughs> Neuralink is building the broadband connection of your mind. 
Instead of your thoughts trickling out at one bit per second, you'll eventually be able to transmit megabits, then gigabits per second of pure thought. But the scaling doesn't just come from more electrodes. The manufacturing improvements Julian mentioned are equally important. They're moving from producing devices for a few dozen patients per year to eventually manufacturing millions. As production scales up, costs come down, and what starts as a medical necessity becomes an elective enhancement for every human on the planet. The combination of better hardware, scaled manufacturing, and improved brain signal decoding algorithms creates a compounding effect. Each improvement amplifies the others, leading to exponential rather than linear progress. So when does this transformation really happen? Well, it's already started, but it'll continue over the coming two decades. Right now, Neuralink devices are reserved for people with severe medical conditions, as the risk-reward calculation for them makes sense when the alternative is complete paralysis and loss of communication ability. For these patients, even experimental technology leads to a major improvement in their quality of life. But as the technology improves and manufacturing scales up, both sides of that equation change. The risks decrease as the devices become more reliable and the surgical procedures become routine. The rewards increase as the capabilities expand and the applications multiply. We're probably a decade away from the first elective implantations for healthy individuals. These early adopters will probably be people whose careers depend on rapid information processing like researchers, programmers, financial analysts, creative professionals, and who knows, with the speed of these AI advancements that are already being released, these industries are already going to be wildly different from a decade ago. Also, as costs come down and social acceptance of brain chips grows, we'll see broader adoption among knowledge workers. The competitive advantage of having a brain chip becomes too significant when your colleagues can think and communicate at digital speeds. The next major phase, probably around 10 to 15 years out, is when high bandwidth brain interfaces become as common as smartphones are today. So not having one becomes a genuine disadvantage in most professional and social contexts. The key takeaway here is that this isn't really a choice about whether or not to adopt the technology. It's a choice about when. The people who understand the trajectory early can position themselves advantageously, and those who wait too long will find themselves trying to catch up in a world that's moved beyond their communication capabilities. We're living through the early stages of the most significant communication revolution in human history. For the first time since the development of language, we're adding a completely new channel for sharing thoughts and ideas. The 100 times speed increase isn't just about faster communication. It's about richer, more complete communication. It's about sharing the full depth of human experience rather than just the compressed summaries we can fit into words. This transformation is happening whether you choose to pay attention or not. The question isn't whether it'll affect your life, career, and relationships. The question is whether you'll understand it well enough to navigate it successfully. If you want to stay informed about these developments, subscribe to Neuropod. We'll continue covering Neuralink's progress and helping you understand what it means for the future of human communication. This is the next step of human evolution. It's going to be the quickest in the history of the world, and you get to witness this transformation right now. So thanks for watching.